Okay, let's say this. How many, how many of you guys are either in Albuquerque, Vegas, Sedona, or Tucson, or Amarillo, or close to any of those? I am debating on where I want to do meet and greets at on this trip. I promised you guys I would do a couple, um, and I can't do them every single stop, but like I have a couple places where I will be for a couple of days. Um, now, now don't, don't stress, okay? Don't stress. I will be coming all over. Maybe not to Australia this year. We'll see. We'll see. But, yeah. Yeah. So, if you guys are in any of those areas, hey, baby. If you guys are in any of those areas, stop it. Stop it. I'm not smiling. You're smiling. Um, if you guys are in any of those areas, I will be planning some meet and greets. So I'm, I've got a lot of my schedule like planned out. I'll get the rest of it done over the next couple of days. Do you guys know that a week from today, a week from today, when I do these Zodiac reads, I will be in Amarillo. I'll be in Amarillo. Yeah. And the week after that, I will be, let's see, where will I be? I think I'll be in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Yeah. If you guys didn't know, I am headed out across the Southwest for two weeks. Um, heading to Vegas. I'm also headed to the Tucson Gem Show. Yes, yes, yes. I will happily, happily send you a goodie bag. Um, if you would like to order a goodie bag, yes, I ship all over the world. You can get one no matter where you are. There's a link on, <laughs> thanks, Sass. There's a link on my profile. Um, you guys can order you a goodie bag. Yep, and we'll get it. So Sass is gonna drive down here and go with me. We're gonna stop at some very interesting places. If you guys are new to watching me, I travel all over the US. I didn't travel a lot last fall because I did a major expansion on my shop. It, it hurt my wallet a little bit, but I did a major expansion on my shop, so I didn't get to travel. However, I travel all over the US, and every time I do, I stop at very unique places. I stop at a lot of haunted places. I also stop and just gather interesting ingredients, interesting spiritual things that you guys can't just go get anywhere. Yeah. I got you. So, so I'm going to try to go to Chaco Canyon, but so Chaco Canyon is one of my dad's favorite places. And I was talking to him today and he said, I absolutely don't recommend Chaco Canyon in the winter, especially with all of the rain, the snow, the mud and stuff. So that may be something I have to do when I go back through. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. Capricorns, are we ready? I didn't even say, are you ready? But yeah. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for us as we are headed across the Southwest, there is a post um, on the top of my profile. You can add your ideas. Yeah, I've been going through them. I've been going through them. Don't think I haven't. All right, we're ready. We ready, Capricorns? If you guys have never watched me with this deck, this is the Crow Oracle deck. Um, this is actually the first edition of this deck. I call this the asshole deck because I mean, it's kind of an asshole. It's just, it's just kind of an asshole. I don't use it very much and um, I'm feeling the need to use it this evening. There we go. Disclaimer. Here we go, Capricorns. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Okay. I saw you jump. I saw you jump. Y'all saw that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. I had to draw another card because the way these came out, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, hold, hold on, hold on. Like, why? I needed an answer to the why. Okay? All right. So, Capricorns, you guys start off with Thanatos, which is completion, 
support, and expediency. Now, the thing you need to focus on here is the completion aspect. So caps, this right here tells me that you, thank you, sweetie, that you really had something big, whether it was something you accomplished, something you decided that you needed to let go of, you just had something major be completed in your life. Um, I'm just gonna say for me personally, it was a way of thinking over last year. Done, I'm done with that. There's something humongous, Capricorns, that just in the last couple of days, you have gone, mm -mm, I'm done. So the completion is a big thing. Then you have territory. And this is just a little disclaimer. Um, if you guys do not know any Capricorns personally, um, Capricorns are mega territorial. We are mega territorial. Really, any cardinal sign is, but Cap oh, Capricorns are really, really bad. Like, really bad. It's one of the bad things about a Capricorn. I will absolutely turn into some petty-ass mamma jamma over what is mine, what my territory, okay? Like, you don't fuck with my shit. But, so I saw that and I went, mm, fuck. Okay, territory. Then exposed. So that's what I had to ask why. That's what I had to ask why over, okay? Then this is what, this is the card that did a big flip and came out. This is memory, okay? Capricorns. This thing that just ended for you, the, and, and the thing is, it's not something that ended, you ended it. And if you haven't ended it, it will in the next day or two. As you are ending this thing, you are full on putting out the stakes. This is my territory. This is my territory. Like you guys are full on. This is my shit. Don't fuck with my shit. The exposed aspect is whenever you take something out of your bucket and there is room for stuff to be put back in, you can see what's down in the bottom of the bucket. So if I had a bucket full of say stones, okay, I took the top stuff off. Maybe the top stuff was all little bitty tumbles. Maybe I forgot what was in the bottom of that? And maybe when I take all those tumbles off the top, maybe there's just a glorious, massive, right now I'm hooked on Smith's tonight again. Maybe there was another glorious, big old wad of Smith's tonight in there that I forgot I had. When you take stuff out of the bucket, the stuff that was in there before, the stuff at the bottom of the bucket is exposed. When the stuff at the bottom of the bucket gets exposed, you remember all of the reasons why you had all that shit in a good way. So at first when I saw these without the why, I was like, oh God, like what the fuck is up with the Capricorns? But that's not it at all. Capricorns, this completion you sorely, sorely needed. Not only did you sorely need it because apparently y'all were kind of getting slightly off, a lot off track, all the way off track last year. And you would kind of, You know how I always say that when you are on your path, it's like big, bright runway lights. Um, Y'all walked off the runway. Y'all just walked off the runway. I, was, I don't know if you went to get a sandwich. I don't know if you needed some barbecue. I don't know why you walked off the runway, but you, rock, you walked off the fucking one, runway, okay? Now you're back on the runway and you're like, this is mine, bitch. And uh, I mean, it's full on... It's full on RuPaul Capricorns. That's that's where the Capricorns are at this week. It is full on. Now I remember exactly who I am. I remember why I was doing the things I was doing and nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to stop me. Caps, this is a very intense week for you. It's powerful, but it's an intense week for you. So for those of you guys that have Capricorns in your life after seeing these cards, I'm just going to say this. Just let them go. Just let them run, okay? Because if if you have never seen a caged up Capricorn that has this kind of energy that suddenly remembers who the fuck they are, it's kind of a sight to see sometimes. I'm just saying what I'm saying. If you have a Capricorn in your life, especially if it's a kid, okay? Especially if it's a kid. This is gonna be a week where they're really restless and they're trying to do too many things at once, okay? Adults, that's on you. You know how to, okay? If you have a kid who's a Capricorn, they're gonna be trying to do too many things at once. 
I highly recommend you take the time with them and you have to model this, okay? You take the time with them and show them how to stop and concentrate on one thing at a time to get these things done. Because if you can teach them that when this energy rolls around when they're an adult, they will harness it and change the whole fucking world, okay? So stones for Capricorns. I'm probably going to give everybody a couple because I feel like a lot of the stones that are needed here lately are not just beginner level stones. Okay. Now, when I say beginner level, these are things that every single metaphysical store has like rose quartz, labradorite, amethyst, serpentine, things like that, selenite. But what I'm going to say for the Capricorns is apophyllite. Apophyllite helps to align your path with your spiritual guides it calls in guides it calls in answers it calls in all of your team basically like let's do this shit okay and because it's my birthday friday and because it's one of my favorite stones has been will be um blue caribbean calcite okay um caribbean calcite i also picked it as my stone for the week for the shop because it's my fucking favorite stone but caribbean calcite is a mix of very light blue calcite and several types of aragonite, usually blue and tan and um, red. It is a stone to open up your third eye. It's also a stone to boost your intuition, boost your gifts. Like it is a fantastic stone. Okay. Um, that's, that's what this is. This is blue. This is Caribbean calcite right here. It is this fantastic turquoise. I don't know what's up with the colors this evening, but it is this beautiful, fantastic turquoise. Apophyllite is normally a white color. You can find it in blue. Um, Apophyllite is not super expensive, but it's not super cheap either. The blue is expensive. Um, I have a big piece of it about like this, and I paid the same amount for that mounted on a stand as I did for a piece of blue about this big. So I'm just letting you know, okay? But Apophyllite is utterly fucking phenomenal, okay? Go get them, Capricorns. End that stupid shit. All right. Where's my Aquarius is at? Oh, my Aquarius gang, where are you at? I think we're going to turn. I, I'd like some light light, I think. I think I'd like some light light. I may not. I may change my mind. Let's see if this helps. There we go. That is Caribbean calcite. It's fantastic. Let's put it on. Yes. <laughs> All right. Ready, Aquarius. Ready. I may or may not have a ton of Caribbean calcite in the shop right now. Woo. Okay, Aquarius. And apparently that stone needs to, or that card needs to go last. I got you. Yeah, I turned a little yellow because, well, okay, let's do this. There's green on the screen here. That's why I turned yellow. There we go. Better. Ready, Aquarius? Ready? It will be on the site uh, by Thursday because on Saturday for the Mad Hatter party, we'll be looking at some stones. I'm just saying. All right, here we go, Aquarius. You guys start off with the Poet of Avalon, which is fame and pride and stagnation. Then you have, ooh, illusion. Then you have distraction. And then you have anticipation. All right. Don't shoot the messenger, Capricorns, okay? Not Capricorns, Aquarius. My sorry. Capricorns when excuse you what? Aquarius. There's something that you've been taking a lot of pride in lately um, that isn't yours. I don't know how to explain it better than that, okay? It's something that you've been putting out there, you've been doing, you've been, whatever it is, and it's not really all the way yours, whether it's not all the way yours yet or whether, I don't know. Let, I'm just going to leave it at that. It's not yours. So, Early this week, please don't shoot the messenger. Early this week, 
this illusion is going to get busted. Okay? This illusion is going to get busted. Whatever this is that you've been taking a lot of pride in that's not completely yours, the universe is going to say, hey, look, like I'm going to need that, that back now. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need that back now. In other words, there's, there's some loss early this week, Aquarius, okay? Something that you're going to have to let go of. What sucks about this is that it's, it's going to distract you. It's going to distract you a lot toward the middle of the week. So really from now until probably Thursday, it's going to be, it, y'all, if y'all have an Aquarius friend or family member or significant other kids, whatever, um, pet them, love them, feed them their favorite foods, get them some hot cocoa, whatever they need, um, because they're going to have a little bit of a rough week, okay? They're going to have a little bit of a rough week, just, just saying. But here's the thing, Friday. So Thursday is actually a new moon. One, one, one is a new moon. I shit you not. Friday, you're going to wake up feeling completely different. Okay? Feeling completely different. Thursday, you're going to be really looking hardcore at why you thought this was yours. Why it it got broken. Like, you know what I mean? It's going to be that really hardcore. This is, this is what it is. So Friday, you're going to wake up completely different because this new moon on Thursday is going to absolutely release you from all of this stuff. Thank you for subscribing, Miss Danica. It's going to absolutely release you from all of this shit. You're going to wake up on Friday with this amazing anticipation amazing anticipation of what's to come. This is absolutely going to be a weekend, Aquarius, that you need to be manifesting your little tiny heinies off. Okay? It's a powerful weekend numerically. It's also, I mean, right after a new moon on 111. I mean, come on now. Come on. On 111. And what's even funnier, well, not funnier, but what's even cooler is if you add up, if you add up everything, it equals 11. If you think about it, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, one. Like if you add one, eleven, and two, zero, two, four, that it equals 11. I want you to think about that. So, this is a fantastic day to make moon water. Every single one of y'all better be making new moon 111 water. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Just saying what I'm saying. So Friday, y'all are going to wake up and be like, okay. You guys will have a whole new outlook and new path this weekend. I'm just letting you know, Aquarius, a whole new path. Okay. So stones for Aquarius. Jade, any color of jade, all the jade, just soak yourself in fucking jade. Um, jade brings in abundance. Jade brings in abundance. I will say this, um, for the middle part of this week where you guys are having a rough time, rose quartz is probably going to be your friend. Rose quartz is going to be your friend. Okay. Cause you're going to need all that self love. Okay. But yes, this weekend, and really this week, all the jade. Every bit of it, all the jade, just soak yourself in it, Aquarius. Okay? All of it. All of it. I'm going to turn my heater on because I got hot while I was doing Reiki. And so I, I, took, my, I took my boots off. Well, when I, I didn't realize that when I took my boots off that my socks were going to come off with it. So now I have cold feet. And I don't like cold feet. But it is what it is. So here we go. All right, that would bring us to my sweet, little, wonderful Pisces. Um, so as I mentioned, Friday be my birthday. Yes, I will still be live on Friday. It'll probably be an impromptu live. Um, Y'all, I made, okay, uh-uh, Pisces, that was three. No, Pisces. So I, I have somebody coming to the shop this weekend. 
Um, and he's a friend of mine. I can't wait for you guys to meet him. His name is Paul Taylor. And he played Pinhead, the Pinhead, in Hellraiser Judgment. Um, Paul is a really, really cool dude. So he is coming in on Friday. And I made some plans for Friday for my birthday because, like, I need to go get my nails done before I got out of town and, and I'm going to have lunch with my sister and things like that. Well, American Airlines is wonderful. And I had a credit because Paul was supposed to come in last fall and he got COVID, so he couldn't come. So I had a credit. It took forever to use said credit and it still cost me more money, but we're getting him here. The problem is he comes in, like, really early. Like 9.30. Like him and I were not happy about that. But it is what it is. So 9.30. So I text him earlier and I said, yo, um, you want to go get a pedicure with me on Friday for my birthday? And he was like, absolutely. And then I said, okay, well, let's do that. And then we'll go have lunch in Tulsa. Um, so I started laughing. I was like, I think I just booked a pedicure with Pinhead. I, I, on my birthday, that's, that's my birthday. I booked a pedicure with Pinhead. <laughs> this is my life. And then I'm taking him to feed him this amazing vegan restaurant. <laughs> so, I mean, like, this is my life. So I don't know what time that'll get done. And then I'm going to take him to his hotel so he can take a nap before dinner. But, um, so yeah, I'll be on live before dinner. I just don't know what time. I just don't know what time. Um, so yeah, but it'll be an impromptu live on my birthday. And then on Saturday, Paul will be at the shop all day signing autographs. Okay. Yes, you can order an autograph. Um, they are up live on the events on my, um, link tree. Um, he's bringing some really cool shit. Like he's bringing some of the Funkos, but he's also bringing some of the Tesseracts that actually move. Some of the puzzle boxes that actually move. Um, when I met him last May, I bought one because I just, I had that one. Like it was fucking cool. It was just fucking cool. All right. Ready, Pisces. I know the Pisces are like, oh my God. Yeah, the, exactly, Jeannie. Um, I hope I said your name right. Pinhead, so in the 80s, I loved horror movies. I love, I still love 80s horror movies. Like, they're terrible. They're great. But there was only a couple that actually scared the living shit out of me. And one was Hellraiser. One was Hellraiser. And it wasn't even Pinhead, really, that scared me. It was all the other weird, funky fucking things. That scared shit out of me. Just saying. So, if you guys would like a autograph or something signed, if you're coming to the shop for the Mad Hatter birthday party, you can even get a selfie with Pinhead. Um, and if you can't come to the party, no big deal. You can still totally order an autograph. All right. We will ship that right to your door. Pisces. The Pinhead Pisces. Maybe that's why I was thinking we'll talk about Pinhead because P, 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 Pisces. You know, I'm just saying. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Ooh, okay, Pisces. Pisces, you guys start off with Hawthor, which is meditation, communication, and culture. Then you have isolation. Then you have anticipation. And then you have fear. Now, notice that is not the crow in fear, okay? Like, the crow is literally standing on top of the fucking scarecrow. Like, I don't fear you, okay? So here's the thing, Pisces. You guys are all about getting back to your roots this week. You are all about getting back to your roots. Because this, so you starting off with Hathor. She is an amazing, amazing African Egyptian goddess. Um, she is like the goddess of partying and she is phenomenal. And I don't mean like, the le like let's drink every bit of the liquor kind of partying like full on cultural dance all those things if you guys i talk about her all the time when i'm on here anyway i digress you guys are all about getting back to your roots this week and expect to not want to people <laughs> expect 
to not want to people. If you guys have a Pisces in your life, you are not going to make them people this week, trust me. They are going to fight you tooth and nail to the point that um, it, it is not even worth it. You will take way more damage trying to make a Pisces do the peopling thing this week than you ever, ever realize. So no, don't make them people, okay? Unless they want to. They are on a deep dive journey this week all about their their path, their process, their ancestry, who they are, who they are, okay? They are going to do this self-hermit thing and there's going to be a lot of anticipation, Pisces. Like you guys are going to start building up this amazing energy. It's almost like you guys are just spinning this energy into this amazing little ball. In anticipation for something that's coming, okay? In a good way. First yawn, ready? There we go. You guys are building up all of this energy for something that's coming. This card right here, the reason that I pointed out that this crow is on top of the scarecrow, like I am not scared of you, bitch, is because all of this energy you guys are building up, Pisces, y'all are about to overthrow some fear in your life. If it's not this weekend, it's going to be early next week. There's something that has been holding you back, Pisces, whether it's yourself, whether it's the world, whether it's energy, I don't know. There is something that has been holding you back. So you building up this energetic ball. Why is my lip itch? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, that should be its own sound bite right there. I may pull that off later. Anyway, I digress. Y'all are ready to overthrow some fear. Y'all are ready to overthrow some fear in your life. This right here, I, I think that this week is also going to show you how much this fear has taken hold of you. This isolation and this getting everything ready as far as to overthrow whatever this fear is, I think that you guys are going to realize how much power this has had over you. Because I don't, I don't think you realize it. I don't think you realize it. Oh, it's going to be a really good week, Pisces. It's going to be a really good week as far as you with some internal work and some getting some things done. Okay. So stones for this week for Pisces, because this is kind of an intense thing. Um, I'm actually going to recommend Walnut Jasper. Walnut Jasper is fantastic for ancestor work. It's also fantastic for past life issues for past life work. Pica um, not Picasso. Walnut Jasper is this gorgeous, like two to three tone brown stone. It looks like an art. It looks like a painting. The other thing I'm going to recommend is Labradorite. You guys, should, every single one of you should have lab. Every single one of you should have lab. Walnut Jasper is decently easy to find. Okay, it's decently easy to find. A lot of a lot of shops carry it. Um, it's it's not super expensive at all. All right. So yeah, there you go. I think that is legit. The first time I have given walnut jasper as a stone, but yeah. All right. Where's my Aries gang at? Where's my Aries at? That was a little bit of a mess there at the end, Aries. That was a little, little bit of a mess there at the end. There they are. There's my Aries coming out of the woodwork. There's my Aries coming out of the woodwork. I knew y'all were just waiting. I knew y'all were just waiting. That's a lot, Aries. That's a lot. And I feel like I need to pull that one right there. So that's what we're getting. All right. Ready? Of course. 
course, that's the card pulled out. Okay. Um, sound an alarm. Don't panic. Hide the women and children. Hide the men. Did I say don't panic? Uh, we have feral Aries this week. We have complete feral Aries this week. Not only do they start off with Nyx, which is the enchantress of the night and secrets and subterfuge, but then they have luck and dominance and play. Um, those cards are kind of self-explanatory. Nyx is a very powerful, dark feminine energy. Not only. So if you're wrestling with an Aries this week, um, let them win. Because they're going to, whether you like it or not. The luck card too, Aries. So on top of being feral as fuck this week, you guys are fantastically lucky. You guys are fantastically lucky. Aries, this is absolutely your week to just be... To just be. <laughs> to just be. So I saw some of you said it was freezing. Let me pull y'all a little closer. Mine, mine is good on this end. Mine is good on this end. I haven't lost service. So I don't know if, um, yeah, I don't know what happened there. But, yeah. Aries, Aries, Aries. We're going to blame that on you. We're totally going to blame that on you. You guys are going to have a fucking phenomenal week because you are full of your own power here. You are lucky as fuck. You are ready to exude your dominance, exert your dominance. You are super fucking playful. And you have all of this really dark divine energy. Like, these are self-explanatory. Like, even if you don't read cards, when I was telling you what these cards just said, you were like, oh, shit. Unless you were an Aries, and then you were like, yeah! So, yeah. The Aries are all, like, rocking out at home right now because they're just on it. I would not be surprised to know if a lot of you Aries were already feeling this and you're already being really mouthy, playing a lot of jokes, and just being this. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. So we have territorial Capricorns. We have dominant Aries. I am I'm curious to see what Cancer and Libra hold in store. Cuz we're going to see if the cardinal signs are um if they're just dominant this week. All right. Stones for Aries. Lapis. Lapis. The brightest lapis you can find. There's a reason that the pharaohs and the very elite in Egyptian society wore necklaces and all of the big O headdresses and chest pieces that had lapis all over them. So, lapis, lapis. And I'm also going to say quartz because quartz is going to amplify anything you're wearing, including lapis. You're welcome. I just made the Aries more powerful. You're welcome. And that's it. We're done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, Taurus. Are you ready? Are you ready? 
I don't know if we're ready. I do like that the Tauruses were like, here's my, here's my card. Like, here's my card. It didn't take me but half a second. It didn't take me half a second. Ready, Taurus? That's a lot, Taurus. That's a lot. Still a lot. Here we go. This fucking anticipation card keeps coming up. So, Taurus, you guys have the Prince, the Forgotten Adversary card. This is Sorrow and Lost Valor and Serendipity. Then you have the night card then you also have anticipation and then you have isolation this is definitely going to be a weekend taurus where you're going to want the isolation the tauruses are all going to be hermiting this weekend just letting you know they're they're gonna be they're gonna be hermits this weekend. Just let them be hermits this weekend. So Taurus and Pisces, um, they they don't want to do things. They don't want to do the people. They don't want to do things. No, they don't want to do things. Okay. But here's the thing, Taurus. You are literally seeing all of those serendipitous moments. If if you have workings that you did and they they you know you knew they were gonna take a while to manifest, um. I would bet you start seeing, I would bet you start seeing a lot of them start to work this week. I also would bet that there are a lot of manifestations that are suddenly coming true. And I would bet, Taurus, that you are just seeing all of these amazing little lines connecting themselves everywhere this week. Because of that, you have this we have dark Tauruses this week. Let me say that. We have dark Tauruses this week because all of these things are starting to happen around them that they manifested, that they did in workings, etc. And now suddenly they're like, well, let me do it again. <laughs> let me do it again. And it like builds up this anticipation, okay? It builds up this amazing, crazy anticipation, that's a lot of why the Tauruses are going to be isolating this weekend. They're doing some shit and some stuff. I'm just letting you know. They're doing some shit and some stuff. Taurus, I didn't mean to tell on you, but I think someone needs to keep an eye on you. So, I'm just saying. We have dark Tauruses this week. Dark Tauruses this week. Who are seeing a lot of their power start to happen. They're seeing things manifesting. They're seeing their workings happen. Um, I'm just saying what I'm saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying. And then this weekend, they're going to be hermits because they're doing some shit. <laughs> So, Taurus, if there was a book you were wanting to read, if there was a movie you were wanting to look at, if there was a documentary, um, and I'm going to go back to the book thing again because those of you Tauruses that are that are witchy poos, uh, this is the week for you to be learning some new shit because this weekend you guys are going to be wanting to do some things and some stuff. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying, Taurus. If you guys have a witchy friend who's a Taurus, you might take them a jar. Take them a new jar. Just saying what I'm saying. Just saying what I'm saying. Just saying what I'm saying. All right. All right. Here we go. Stones for Taurus. Stones for Taurus. Oh, man. I'm going to say amethyst and obsidian. Obsidian is a very versatile stone. It's used for protection. It's also used for offensive things, offensive and defensive. And amethyst is pretty similar. Amethyst is also used in some dream work. And for some reason, that was my main point of um, putting amethyst out there. I'm just saying. Just 
saying what I'm saying. Just saying what I'm saying. Son of a bitch. Now I see why I needed the, the crow cards. Holy shit. All right. Gemini's. Where's my Gemini's? There they are. There's my Gemini's. I'm almost afraid, like, as we keep going further, I'm like, geez, we have, like, territorial Capricorns. We have feral Aries. We have dark Tauruses. We have hermit Pisces. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So, Geminis, you got to start off with the mother of creation, which is motherhood, ferocity, and creation. Then you have protection. And then you have influence. And then you have release. That's a lot. I want you guys to notice, too, all of the egg symbolism here. Just saying. Just saying what I'm saying. Gemini's. Mm, this is absolutely the week for you to start manifesting for your 2024. If you haven't already or maybe you just haven't felt like you needed to yet, it's a new moon. It's a new moon on 111, and you have the creation card starting out. Not only do you have the creation card starting out, you have the protection card, meaning that as you manifest this week, Gemini, you're protected in it. You can't make this shit up. You also have a lot of influence. This influence card here, it's not that you're influenced, it's that you have a lot of influence this week. Almost said Aquarius. Gemini. We're going to talk about that release card last. We're going to talk about it last. This right here is a lot of powerful manifesting energy this week. The creation card. You're protected with it. And you're very influential. You know the right things to say at the right times. So... If you guys have not started your manifestations for 2024, this is for all of you. Make sure that you have the exact wordings down. And if you need to tweak your wordings as you go along, that's fine. But you have to have the exact words. Because if you leave one thing out, guess what? The universe is going to use that as a loophole. Okay? As a loophole. But, Gemini, you guys are manifesting power houses this week now here's the thing this is the release card as you're manifesting something the universe is going to require that you give up something voluntarily so all of this other good shit can be brought in now you can't just go oh well i'm gonna give up clipping my toenails in bed or some shit Ugh, i don't know where that came from i bad bad body bad that was gross if y'all clip your toenails in bed, definitely give that up. But you have to give up something important. Like you have to give up something. If you are manifesting something huge, you can't just go, well, I'll, I'll give up drinking coffee for a week. No, it doesn't work that way. If you are a coffee fanatic, if you are a coffee fanatic, and you are manifesting maybe opening a business and having a six-figure growth this year, like a six-figure salary this year, you better give up coffee altogether. Like, that's where we're at. The bigger the thing that you give up, the better the manifestation will be. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Don't, don't, kind of, don't try to backhand, you know, backhand the universe. That didn't sound right. You know what I'm saying? 
Don't try, don't try to Indian give the universe. There we go. I don't know. Y'all know what I'm saying. Shit. Can't words. You have to give up something to get something. Okay? All right? But Geminis, this is a fantastic week for you. This is a manifesting powerhouse fucking week for you. Be very careful with your words, though, because this right here, this card of influence, what comes out of your mouth this week might happen, Geminis, okay? So be very, very careful with what comes out of your face hole because if you are really upset with somebody and you say some shit this week, I'm just saying, okay? Your influence is very powerful, very powerful this week, Gemini, okay? Be careful with those words. So, stones for Gemini. There's a lot. Like, there's a lot. I'm... I'm going to say K2. K2 is a very interesting stone. It's the it's blue. It's little tiny dots of blue that's usually found in like granite. Um K2 is a really powerful stone. <clears throat> it's something that every one of you guys should have, okay? But blue appetite is going to be the other one. All right? Blue Appetite is attuned to the future. That's going to help you with this amazing manifestations. But K2 is going to help you boost your third eye to get the right thing. Does that make sense? So, yeah. I just ordered some K2. I have some palm stones in the shop. Um, I'm about to order some more. I'm about to order some more. <clears throat> I feel like I swallowed wrong and I have something stuck in my throat right there. And it's not really cool. That that would bring us to that would bring us to cancers, yeah? Yeah. There they are. There's all my little cancer babies. What does the K2 stone look like? Um, um, like that. It's usually granite and it has little specks of blue in it. Because the, the K2 stone itself, it only forms in these little tiny pockets. So the rest of it's in granite, usually with pyrite, okay? But yeah, that's what it that's what it looks like. It looks this is actually gray with blue. It just the the light makes it look more turquoise. But yeah, that's that's it right there. That's it right there. All right, cancers, you ready? You ready? You can't make this shit up. Remember how I said, like, y'all are watching me shuffle. Y'all are watching me shuffle, right? Y'all are watching me shuffle. Remember how I said that we have territorial Capricorns. We have dominant Aries. Yeah. And I was curious about Cancer and Libra. We have dominant cancers this week. We actually have feral cancers this week. They also start off with nicks. Then they have dominance. Then they have gifts. Then they have abundance. So these are some feral, abundantly manifesting little crabs. They are Mr. Crabs. I pinched for dominance. Oh my God, that was funny as fuck. I looked up just in time to see that. So. It's 
if you have a cardinal sign in your life, they are extra on their shit this week. I'm just saying. I don't have much faith that Libra is going to be any different. I really don't. I think Libra is going to be just as insane as the rest of the cardinal signs. But Cancers, here we go. You guys start off with Nyx, which is secrets and vigilance and subterfuge. And this is the enchantress of the night. Then you have dominance, just like the Aries. Then you also have gifts. And then abundance. <sighs> Here's the thing, Cancers. And so you guys are absolutely on it this week. You are absolutely on it this week. You have these amazing, amazing ideas, manifestations, where you want to go in life, what you want, etc. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You actually have to stand up for yourself and be dominant and grab it. Okay? You can't just sit and go, well, um, I, I'll, I'll do it later. Okay, Cancers? You need to take this dominant feeling that you've got this week because you have it. You are fucking full of it this week. You, It's like you ate all of your oats. You are, argh, you are on it. Okay? You ate all the Frosted Flakes, whatever you want to say. You are on it. Okay? You have this amazing, dark, enchantress of the night energy. You are going to be drawing people to you. When you when Nyx pulls up in any reading, and I know Nyx pulled up in, in another one earlier, you draw people to you. The magnetism of Nyx is like this deep, dark, seductive night, etc., you're going to be drawing people to you. You have to be you have to be assertive. You have to let this dominance out. If someone has crossed a line with you, it is a simple no. Repeat it with me, Cancers. No. You can add ma'am or sir if you'd like just for extra emphasis. No, ma'am. Works great no matter who you're talking to. I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm saying. But that is also coming from a Capricorn with five Capricorn placements. So I'm just, <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't want to go all the way down that route, but it does elicit some funny reactions. And I digress. No is a thing, Cancers. Be fucking dominant this week, Cancers. I know you can. I know you can when you want to be. Because all of this dominance and all of this bringing things into you, like at work, you're going to have people come to you, things come to you. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you get a raise this week or you get a new job. There's going to be a lot of abundance. Like you literally have the fucking abundance and gifts card, Cancers. I don't know what kind of better week you could possibly fucking have. The other thing too is this, Cancers, with this gifts. You guys are going to be looking around at things in your life right now and going, holy shit, like, that's pretty fucking cool. Holy shit. Like, this is my job. This is what I get to, this is what they pay me to do this. Things like that. Okay. Things like that. You're going to look around at a lot of the things in your life cancers and go, holy shit. Holy shit. Just saying. I'm just saying, you are abundant as fuck this week and the gifts just keep fucking coming. Cancers, I don't, like, this is probably one of the fucking best weeks. I'm, I'm just saying what I'm saying. This is going to be one of the best weeks. Own it, own it. But you guys are going to have to be fucking dominant. You guys are going to have to exude that dominance. Okay? Got it? Get your little pincers out and grab the shit. Okay? It's your shit. Grab it. Hold on to it. <sighs> Cancers. I'm going to say carnelian. 
I'm gonna say carnelian. Carnelian is a stone of personal power. It's a stone of drive, it's a stone of creativity. Like it is just an empowering stone. Now normally, I'm not saying you cancers are weenies, okay, so please don't take it that way, but as a water sign, you want everybody to be happy. So a lot of times, even though you're a cardinal sign and you're a natural born leader, you want everybody to be happy. So sometimes your way of leading is to let other people other people walk all over you. So no, don't let that happen this week, Cancers. Okay, this is your week to be like, mm-mm, mm-mm. All right? So, Carnelian. Carnelian, Carnelian, Carnelian. Lapis is also going to be a good stone for you too. In fact, the two together it would probably be a powerhouse. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm looking forward to Libra too. I saw somebody say, I'm looking forward to Libra. I am too. I am too. Carnelian and Lapis. Thank you. All right. Leos, are you ready? Are you ready? Leos are like, no. There we go. <laughs> it took me like four times because the Leos were like, hell no. Hell no. How much you want to bet we have we have Leos that are wanting to be lovey hermits this week? How much you want to bet? I'm going to shit cookies if that's actually what is in the cards. I'm just saying like Leos, you guys have Hades, which is wisdom, inevitability, and equality. Then you have routine. Ready for it? Commitment. And community. Leos. I, I don't think the hermit thing is in your cards this week, but the lovey-dovey thing absolutely is. The lovey-dovey thing absolutely is. Leos, this week, you guys are all about the people that you love. You are all about the people that you love. Here's the thing with you, Leos, and y'all know I'm right. And any of you guys that have a Leo in your life, you know I'm right when I say this. Leos are one of two ways. There's no in between. They are either all about themselves, super drama filled, like Leos are the drama. They are. None of you others. I know you Scorpios are like, nope, I'm no. I have raised three, three Leos. They are the drama. They are. I have raised girls and boys. They are the drama. I'm just letting you know. They hold that crown. Let them have it. Either they are the drama or they are the most sweetest, kindest, loving, let me do everything for you people. And though when they're in that mode, they get walked all over. It is that week. So if you guys have Leos in your life, you're going to want to protect them. I just realized I have two Leo children and I have the territory card as a cap. Don't fuck with my kiddos this week. <laughs> Don't fuck with my kiddos this week. But Leos, y'all start off with Hades, which is wisdom and equality and inevitability. This routine card right here, Leos, you're craving routine this week, okay? Don't be surprised if you catch yourself doing the same thing every single day at the same time. I've got to have my coffee at this time. I've got to drive to work at this time. I've got to eat lunch. Don't be surprised, okay? Don't be surprised. You are craving routine this week. Don't be surprised also, Leos, if there are some things that you used to do that used to be routines for you that you're like, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that this week. We're going to do this again. Okay. 
I don't know if it'll stick past this week, but there's a lot of things you guys are going to put in place as routine this week, Leos, okay? The other thing is this. This is the commitment card. This is the first one I was talking about with being all lovey-dovey. For those of you guys, I'm going to give you a couple different readings here. For those of you guys that are attached, Leos, you guys are going to be wanting to wait on your significant other, hand and foot, doing all this amazing stuff for them and being the sweetest shits ever. Okay, for those of you guys that are unattached Leos, that are single Leos, you're going to be really kind of hardcore delving into dating, flirting, talking with this person, talk, whatever it is. Okay, you're just, you're just lovey-dovey. You're just lovey-dovey Leos. That's it. Don't let someone take advantage of you, single Leos. Okay, I will have to come throat punch them and I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. Okay, I don't want to do that, but the next thing you have is commitment, okay? This is a little different. You have this routine here, and you have the, oh wait, excuse me, community, community, community. You have this routine here. With the community around you, if you really want to make a change in your life, Leos, like you know how everybody makes like New Year's resolutions and shit like that. If you really are wanting to hardcore make a change, this is the week to start that. This is the week to start that. With this routine card, with the commitment card, with this community card, this is the week to start it, okay? If there is something new that you're wanting to start, this is the week. If there's a habit you're wanting to break, this is the week. This is a very powerful week of change because you have all of the things here, Leos, that are going to give you the support you need to move forward with it, okay? Because when you guys are lovey-dovey, y'all are like some of the most sweet people ever, ever. And people will do anything for you when you're sweet, Leos. We... Yeah, we crave the sweet Leos like nobody's business because we already know how you guys are when you are the drama. We we just are. We already know. So we look forward to the sweet Leos, okay? This is the week. If you want to change something, if you want to create a new habit, this is absolutely the week for that, Leos, okay? So... I know I just gave this to the Cancers, but I'm going to give this to you as well. And that's Carnelian. Carnelian is a stone of change. It's a very powerful, very passionate stone. And it's an amazingly creative stone as well. So for those of you guys that are wanting to create new habits, that's a great one to help you solidify those habits. I'm also going to say serpentine, just regular green serpentine. And serpentine looks like this. Okay, just regular green serpentine because that is a fantastic healing stone. As you guys are re-evaluating and redoing some of your habits and so on, that right there is going to help you with that. Okay, those are two Those are two stones that you guys should be able to find at any metaphysical shop. Any metaphysical shop should have those. Okay, I'm proud of you, Leos. I'm going to say that before we ever get going in this week. When a Leo wants to make a change, when a Leo is absolutely like determined, I'm making this change. The things that they can do and the things that they can accomplish are utterly fantastic. They're utterly fan-fucking-tastic. So I'm proud of you, Leos, okay? I'm super proud of you. I'm just going to say that beforehand. Where's my Virgos? Uh-uh, Virgos, that was like three. Virgos. That was that was a pretty violent shuffle. That was a pretty violent shuffle. I'm sorry that I told you guys no, that you couldn't have three anchor cards. But you didn't have to do that. That was a loud pop. Did you see that? Uh, 
<sighs> I think I'm funny. Really? Really? Um, you know what? That's three. Apparently, y'all are a little extra this week. Y'all are a little extra this week, because I'm going to let you have it. Of course. Y'all start off with King Arthur. That's why I said, of course, and it was a joke, okay? Because this is championship, nobility, and self-realization, okay? So the good side of the King Arthur card, it's King Arthur. He does all the good stuff, right? The bad side of the King Arthur card is that he lets power go to his head, okay? And this is the card that y'all popped at me. This is the card y'all popped at me. And I even used the word, that was a very violent shuffle, This would be the wrath card. This this would be the wrath card. We just have angry Virgos this week. We have angry Virgos this week. My oldest son is a Leo Virgo cusp and I can't do angry Brody. I just can't. I don't want to do angry Brody. I just, I just, mm -mm. Angry Virgos in general, if you guys have never been around a Virgo when they lose their shit, it's probably one of the most scary things I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of people lose their shit, but a Virgo, this is the fucking wrath card. Virgos are on a fucking rampage this week. Virgos are on a fucking rampage this week. Then you had three cards come out and I'm gonna read them the exact way that they fell. Okay, they fell like this. You have distraction. Underneath that you have illusion. And underneath that you have curiosity. Notice all the birds on the wire and the one is going in. I want you to notice that both of these, both of these birds are screaming in distraction. Notice that. Notice this one's distracting the dog so they can eat his food. Notice that this one's screaming in the broken mirror. Yeah. Virgos, you have a lot going on this week. You have a lot going on this week. Okay. That wrath card right there. Um, be careful who you snap at, okay? Be careful who you snap at this week and why you're snapping at them because you have a lot of distraction this week. You have a lot of distraction this week. Being so distraction, distractions, being so distracted is going to irritate you, okay? When you guys get distracted, you get very irritated. As an earth sign, you love your focus. You need your fucking focus. Okay. Also, as an earth sign, you hate liars. You absolutely abhor liars. Not that anybody just likes liars, but with an earth sign, especially, mm -mm, especially Virgos. Virgos are a mutable sign, meaning that they thrive in chaos, okay? They like to bring order to the chaos. So when they catch somebody lying to them or they see that there is a situation that they've been involved in that was totally an illusion, they are going to lose it. So Virgos, again, be really careful who and where you lose it, who you lose it at and where you lose it. Because there's going to be some things that pop up this week that you are going to say you're going to see are not what you thought they were. Now, the other thing is this when a Vir 
Tauruses are like the petty queens. Okay? Tauruses are like the petty queens. They are behind your back petty. Virgos, however, are right up in your face. They are like a Gen X kid that got pushed too far and just comes up and cold cocks you in the face. Like, that's a Virgo. That's a Virgo. There is no talking. They're just going to smack you. Okay? So this curiosity here, when you find out this illusion aspect, whether it's that somebody has been lying to you, that a situation isn't what you thought it was, your little Virgo asses are going to go just marching right on in there and be like, look, bitch, why did you do this? Why did you do that? You guys are going to jump right in the middle of the fucking situation and start just shots fired. You're just going to call everybody out that's involved in the situation. So, I mean, I guess if you have a Virgo in your life, just grab some popcorn and let's watch the fireworks because that's what this week is, Virgos, fucking fireworks. You guys are purging all of this bullshit in a very, very um, interesting way. Just saying. In a very interesting way. And the thing is, you're right about it. You're right about it. Okay. Damn. All right, Virgos. Go get them. Go get them. Um, I'm going to say Obsidian is going to be your best friend this week because Obsidian is a very, very good, versatile stone. Good for defense. Good for offense. Um, I'm also going to say, I kind of want to say golden healer, but those can be a little hard to find. So I'm going to say citrine instead. Okay. Citrine. Y'all need some happiness. Y'all need some happiness. Plus black and yellow. They go fantastic together. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Thank you, sweetheart. How are, you, how are you doing? How are you doing, happy mama? All right. Y'all know what sign we're on. Y'all know what sign we're on. Our last cardinal sign. Who doesn't want to draw a card or they want to draw five? I feel like I need to draw that one too. Son of a bitch, Libras. <sighs> well, that didn't scare the shit out of me. Did it scare the shit out of you? <laughs> Libras? Libras. All right. You got to have your last card sideways down there. I got it. I got it. Okay. Come on now, Libras. This is a lot. It's a lot. It is what it is. We're all, we've all got a lot this week. We've all got a lot. All right. Drum roll. We ready, Libras? You guys, your anchor cards could not be. Y'all are like two people. You guys start off with set, which is ambition, but it's also narcissism and short-sightedness. But we're going to focus on the ambition there because the other one you have over here is the matriarch, and this is rejection and opportunities. So ambition and opportunities. In other words, these are two very, very powerful cards as far as getting what you want, Libras. Then we also have mischief and preparation. And then this one you threw at me sideways, which is distraction, which is a good thing. You don't want any distractions. I mean, at least we don't have dominant Libras. 
But here's the thing, Libras. Very similar to the Capricorns, you guys have a big yawn. You're not territorial, but your ambition this week is on fucking point. Is on fucking point, Libras. You are ready to prepare for whatever it is that you're doing. Like, you have to get ready to prepare. I know you guys are like, well, that makes no sense. That's like redundant. It kind of is, but think about it. If you are about, if you, you're like, all right, I got to go to the grocery store. What is the first thing you fucking do? You make a list. You make a list. If you are going to the grocery store to get just, okay, here's a good example. I'm leaving town on Monday. Okay. So on Sunday, I will go to the grocery store. And I will get some snackage and stuff like that to pack in the car for us. But before I go, I'm going to make a list to get stuff to prepare for the journey. Libras, that's where you are this week. You're like, all right, I've got prep. Why do I have the fucking hiccups all of a sudden? Libras, take your hiccups back. I'm like holding my breath. There's another one. All right, uh-uh. I've been getting the hiccups a lot this week. It's kind of dumb. I just want to I just want to make that clear. It's kind of dumb. Thank you, Miss Hippie Mama. But here's the thing. You guys are ready to prepare for all of this ambition, all of this drive, all of these God damn. You do not have time for distractions either. If you guys are going to try to pull a Libra off of something this week, uh, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're, you're not. If you guys have a friend that's a Libra and you're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to randomly go out. No, you're not. Libra ain't going. Libra ain't going. Unless it has something to do with them preparing for whatever they're pre like. The Libras are preparing to take over the world, I think. Like, I'm not going to lie. These are two massively powerful ambition cards massively powerful ambition cards. You are not going to get a Libra to do anything this week that doesn't involve that ambition. Un unless it is severely ornery, like toilet papering a house or something, then you might get the Libra to go with you. But yeah, just, just know that you guys are not going to get a Libra off their game this week. But what this card means right here, this fucking mischief card, is that with this preparation, Libras, y'all are setting fucking booby traps and all kinds of shit. Like, Libra, I don't know if I trust you little shits this week. You have two really powerful ambition cards, and then the mischief card, and then a prep. I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't trust you, Libras. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. No. 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 Oh, God damn. My moon is Libra. Oh, God damn. I don't ever really think about this, really, because I'm reading for y'all, okay? But this just hit me, right? The Capricorn, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm territorial. I'm always territorial, okay? But my fucking moon is Libra. Y'all guess what my rising is? Fucking Virgo. I may need to sequester myself this week. But it's my birthday week, so I can't. I don't trust y'all Libras this week. I just don't. I don't. The Libras are full on in it for their fucking selves this week. Now, here's the thing. You absolutely should be, Libras. You absolutely should be. You should completely be in it for yourselves this week. And you are. Because a lot of times, almost every single Libra I know, I'm not saying that y'all are weenies because you're not. Like, you are powerhouses when you want to do stuff. But you want everything to be balanced. And you want people around you to be happy. And so you kind of tend to be a pushover, like the cancers a little bit. You guys overthink everything and you want to talk everything through and you let things slide. This week, mm-mm, 
Mm -mm. Libras are letting nothing slide. They are letting nothing slide. They are in it for themselves. They will step on your child to get their way. Not really. Not really. They will. They will absolutely. Um, they might. I don't know. I'm. I'm just saying. I'm not. Labor. I don't trust y'all. So. Damn, Libra. I don't even know what kind of, I think I, I feel like I need to give everybody else like some protective stones against the Libras this week. But the thing is, like, I feel like you guys deserve it too. So while I want to make a joke and be like, so and I, um, I'm going to say Malachite, Malachite, because you guys are all about ambition this week. Malachite is a master manifestation stone. I am also going to say selenite, though, okay? I'm going to say selenite, though, because some of these cards over here, you don't really want to take this mischief card with you all week long, okay? You don't really want to, you don't really want to take it with you all week long. But also, I know that you Libras, I mean, don't get me wrong, every single sign has narcissistic people that belong to it, but... I know that the majority of you Libras are not like that set card. You know, you're not super like, I'll walk over anybody to get what I want. So when that pops up this week, you're going to need a way to calm down from it. It's going to serve you well when you need it this week. But you're going to also want to clear, clear it. Okay, so selenite. Okay, selenite. I don't recommend that you keep your selenite and your malachite together this week, though, Libras, okay? So maybe selenite beside your bed at night or like on one side selenite and on, you know, the other side your malachite or carry your malachite with you. But yeah, don't cleanse your malachite this week, okay? Okay, Libras, don't cleanse your malachite this week. In fact, I don't know that I would cleanse them next week either. You want to keep that, you want to keep that out, you know? Keep that amazing energy in there. All right, Scorpios, ready? Scorpios were, they were totally ready. They're like, here are my cards. Just read my cards. Okay. All right, Scorpios. Just like the Capricorns, you start off with Thanatos, which is completion. It's also expediency, like quickly something moving fast then you have two cards that came out together you have nature and you have anomaly underneath it okay notice how close those cards look like they literally could just go together almost in the same scenery okay and then you have upheaval then you have upheaval so here's the thing scorpios you have you have something this week that has to be finished I don't know if this is like a situation, a relationship, a situationship, a job, a, whatever. It is something that has to do with other people or another person specifically that it's it's done. It's over. It's done. Um, and you already know it. You are ready to end whatever this situation is very, very quickly. Like psh, just chop it off like with a guillotine. Okay. Done. So here's the thing. When this happens, Scorpios, and it is, if it hasn't already happened like today, it'll probably happen within the next two days. When this happens, you're going to really want to just take a run. You know what I mean? Whether it is going for a drive, whether it is watching some nature shows, like there's a lot of stuff you feel like you really need to ground. You need to kind of clear some shit out. So I am absolutely going to recommend Scorpios. I mean, being a water sign, Earth balances you. So when you have this ending, Earth is going to help balance you. Or hang out with some of your Earth sign friends. I mean, I don't recommend the Virgo because they're angry this week and they're liable to like help you plan some shit with whatever this is you're ending. So maybe not hang out with your Virgo friends. But, I mean, Capricorns have the same thing. They're going through some endings as well. Thank you for the jellyfish, Miss Renee. Um, or the Tauruses. The Tauruses are having a fantastic week too. But, 
the yawn dance. As you're out enjoying this nature, as you're grounding and connecting back to yourself, you're going to see a massive anomaly that has developed in your life. Now, I have a feeling that this is a good anomaly, okay? Don't think that this is something bad. The ending may seem bad, but you remember the story? Well, maybe you guys weren't here, okay? So let me tell you this little story real quick. Um, it's one that's on a, a talk by one of my favorite um, Shaolin monk talk speakers on, on the TED Talks. He It is um, Master uh, Shi Yang He. Sorry. I, I knew I was going to mess it up and I probably still did mess it up. Anyway, here's the story because this, this, this is what's going on this week with you, Scorpios. Okay? Because you also have this upheaval card. So there's a story that he tells that there was, there was an older man in the village a long time ago and his horse went missing. So he searches and searches and searches for three days. Horse is gone. And all the people in the village say, that's too bad. That's too bad. And he says, maybe. The third day, the horse comes back and brings five wild horses with it. And everybody's like, oh my God, that's fantastic. What abundance. Look at that. And he says, maybe. The next day, his son is out trying to work with one of the wild horses and breaks his leg. One of the horses bucks him off and he breaks his leg. And everybody around says, oh my God, that's such a tragedy. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And he says, maybe. The following day, one of the military commanders comes to that town and he's looking for any able-bodied man to go and fight for a war. You'd leave right now. Well, his son broke his leg. So he can't go. He's not able-bodied. So all of the townspeople say, oh my God, this is fantastic. And of course he says, maybe. But the whole point of that story is kind of funny at the end. But the whole point of that story is a lot of times there are things that happen. There are things that end. And there are things that need to be completed because there's an anomaly that's popping up. Not everything is bad when it looks bad on the outside, but not everything is good when it looks good on the outside. This upheaval, Scorpios, with this completion and seeing this anomaly, there's an upheaval in your path this week. It could be something in here internally. It could be something in your job and your family. There is an upheaval this week, Scorpios. And like I said, you've completed something and now you've got this upheaval after seeing this anomaly this week. Not all upheaval is bad. Not all upheaval is good. Take it for what it's worth this week, Scorpios. There's a lot of change. You are going to have to just kind of go with the flow a little bit. But I don't see it being a horribly bad week at all. I see it actually being a pretty neutral week. You're ending something that you needed to end you're grounding, you're getting balanced back out. You see this gorgeous anomaly in your life and then there's an upheaval. Like there's nothing at all with upheaval that I see that makes it good or bad. I have, I really have a feeling it's just kind of a neutral week. You're getting rid of some stuff. You're bringing in some stuff. Okay. You're, you're, it's really, really a neutral week, Scorpios. So I don't think this is a bad week. I think that there are going to be some things that happen. And when they do, I want you guys to go, okay, okay. Let me just pause. Get back to balance. Hang around some of your earth sign friends, not Virgos. Virgos are angry this week. Don't hang around the Virgos. Get back to, get back to yourself. Get back to some nature, okay? I think it's actually going to end up being a very, very good week for you, Scorpios. When In a couple weeks when you look back, because there's some important things that are happening this week for you. Some very important things that are happening this week. Okay? So, yeah. Yeah. Stones for Scorpios. Fluorite. 
fluoride is going to help you focus. It's going to help you kind of see what's going on there. And I'm also going to say blue appetite because it's attuned to the future. So you need the focus, especially when all of this stuff is going on. And you need that blue appetite to help you be kind of attuned to the future and see and understand what's going on. Does that make sense? I don't know what the hell that sound was. That was a weird sound. All right. Sagittarius is. Really? I know you guys are last every week and I love you and you guys are the most awesome people. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you being so sweet. I also appreciate your little fiery selves. Where's all my Sagittarius is at? All right, here we go, Sagittarius. Not quite feral Sagittariuses, so that's a good thing. Nobody is ready for feral Sagittariuses. To be honest, I think that a feral Sagittarius is much worse than a feral Aries. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Not that you Aries aren't scary when you're feral. But um, if you've ever seen a Sagittarius that's fair, oh my God, oh my God. I'm just, that's all I'm gonna say is, oh my God. Thank you for that, Katie. Sagittarius, you guys start off with Osiris, which is commitment and acquisition and responsibility. Let me just say it's gonna be a really interesting week. Because you also have survival, and then you have freedom, and then you have mischief. So Sagittarius, you guys are kind of all over the place this week. You are really, really focused on the commitments that you have, the responsibilities that, responsibilities that you have, and where you're going, okay? So with the commitments that you have, that's the survival card right here. When all of these commitments pop up, you're going to be sitting here looking at every one of them like, okay, like, do I really need to continue to do this? Because here's, and here's what I'm going to tell you, Sagittarius, when you are having to look at some of your commitments and you're having to look at how much actual time you have to give to those commitments, I want you to remember that you hold the key to getting out of those commitments. You hold the key. Okay? So when you're looking at the survival aspect with all these commitments, keep that in mind. The next aspect is this. The acquisition. And this is freedom. There is something that you are letting go of this week. Period. While it's Whether it's something that it's, it's just too much as far as your responsibilities go, as far as your commitments go, or it's something that's completed and you're done with it and it's off your plate. There is a wonderful amount of freedom this week, Sagittarius. In other words, some chain has been removed and you are out. You are out of here. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not coming back kind of thing. It's a very, very amazing feeling, Sagittarius. And whatever this is, I know that you guys have been waiting for a while for this to happen. So this makes me really, really happy for you. The other aspect is this. When it comes to your responsibilities, um, y'all have the mischief card as well, which means that you're not really going to be big on actually doing your things this week. Um, so if you live with the Sagittarius, just know like they're not going to want to do the dishes or their laundry. They're not going to want to take the trash out. Like, I would not be surprised, Sagittarius, if some of you guys have already uh, decided to call in sick this week, take a mental health day, or take vacation days, or just fucking quit. Like, there's going to be, y'all are kind of ornery. 
y'all are kind of ornery this week. So just know there are ornery, mischievous Sagittariuses out there this week. They are not Virgo level with the angry and they are not, you know, feral level like the Aries, but there are some mischievous shits this week. There, they are some mischievous shit this week. Um, Sagittarius, I see this really being a good week for you. You're really playful and you're ready to laugh and have a good time this week. And I think that is utterly fantastic. Like just, just don't go, just don't go overboard. You know what I mean? Just don't, don't be a dick with it, but enjoy your week, Sagittarius. Like this is a great week. You're really going to be evaluating like, do I actually have time for these commitments that I've made? And then letting some things go. Y'all are going to be actually finishing some things this week. And I think that is a fantastic way to be. So enjoy your week, Sagittarius. Enjoy your week. It's going to be really good and kind of one of those neutral weeks as well. Not as neutral as the Scorpios because y'all are ornery as fuck, but it's a pretty neutral week. In other words, just be in a good mood and enjoy it because it's a good week. It's a good week, Sagittarius. Okay? Pretty calm. Pretty chill. All right? Yeah? Stones for Sagittarius. I'm also going to say citrine for you guys because I have a feeling y'all are just going to be happy this week. Literally, just, just happy this week. Um, I'm also going to say... I'm also going to say Labradorite. I know both of those are very easy to find. Um, citrine is a good stone of happiness and abundance. Labradorite will help you on your path. So these areas of commitment that you guys need to look at and see if you actually have time for all of them, that will help you, okay? That will help you. So it sounds like it's going to be a very interesting week for everybody. For everybody, like in a in a interesting way. In an interesting way. An interesting week in an interesting way. Yeah. So I'm listening to my kid have a conversation in there. It's really funny. With that, I am gonna let you guys go. I am gonna go crash because I can feel my energy starting to fade a little bit. It's been a long day for me. I know it's been a long day for y'all too. I will start this downloading and I will get it up tonight. Hopefully I can get it to upload while I sleep. And that way when you wake up in the morning, good job, it'll be there for you. All right. I love you guys so, so much. Every single one of you, even you trolls, even those of you lurky loos out there that aren't really coming into the live. I see you. Have a fantastic Tuesday. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow night for mediumship reads. Yeah. See you tomorrow.